Uh, let's move it on to our next speaker here. I'm going to bring on our next guest now, Maria uh, Machikini, who is the CEO of Anovi's Bio. Maria, there you are. Look at that. How are we doing today? Well, thank you so much for having me. And I'm just going to quickly tell you what we do, and then I have a rebuttal. So what we are doing, we are trying to cure Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. And that is a really tough thing to do. So as the gentleman mentioned, we are a small company. We don't have much float. We don't have much trading. We are highly volatile. And by all means, do day trading very, very fast. I would think that if instead you look at the value, if we actually have a disease that we could treat, a disease that nobody in the whole world has been able to treat, maybe the stock will go up and stay up. So there are two ways of looking at stock. My original investors to date have made 36 fold on their investment. They have not day traded. Not arguing about day traders, please look at your stock very carefully, very fast. But if you want to cure a disease that nobody in the whole world has ever been able to cure, maybe you want to be a little bit more long term. So let's go into my talk. As I said, we are treating Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease. And the reason I'm so stuck on treating both is that I strongly believe, and I have proven it in animals, that nerve cells die the exact same way. And our drug recovers them and saves them the exact same way. So we are looking at being in two phase two studies, one in Alzheimer's and one in Parkinson's. And later I will show you the readout from the Parkinson's. And in a few weeks or very shortly, I will tell you the readout from the Alzheimer's study. So what are we doing different than all the others that have failed? Here you see that amyloid is toxic. Every pharma company that has worked on Alzheimer's disease has attacked plat. And then a few have attacked tau, which is tangles, and very few have attacked alpha synuclein, which is Lewy bodies and Parkinson's. They have all failed. The reason they have all failed in the brain of an Alzheimer or a Parkinson's patient, there is amyloid, there is tau, there is alpha synuclein, all three are toxic and there is inflammation. If you just get rid of one of them, you still have the others and it's not good enough. The nerve cells will die. And every time a nerve cell dies, the function associated with that nerve cell dies also. So this is a nerve cell. On the left, you see the body of the nerve cell. It is in the brain. And then on the right, you see the fingers of the nerve cell. And in between, the fingers need to be somehow related to the brain, there is an arm. And the arm is really what transfers the information from the brain to the fingers. The fingers touch everything we do, see, feel. They touch other nerve cells, they touch internal organs, they touch the periphery, they, they feel the environment. So for us to be functional, the body of the nerve cell needs to interact with the fingers and the fingers need to get the information back to the body. And what we found is that what is most important in the health of a nerve cell is that this information flow works. Because if it doesn't work, just think, if you don't perceive the world, if you can't tell your foot to move, you're a vegetable. And so the most important thing that our drug repairs is the information highway, which is axonal transport. Transport of information through the arm, which is called an axon. So we came up with a toxic cascade. On the left, you see how nerve cells die. Neurotoxic proteins, a beta tau alpha synuclein, they impair the information flow. So there is less information flow that causes inflammation that causes nerve cells to die. And when nerve cells die, the function gets lost. What we have shown in animals and are about or have somewhat shown in humans is that our drug fully reverses the toxic cascade. Lower levels of neurotoxic proteins leave the information flow normal or improve the information flow if it was reduced. They do lower inflammation 
they do protect nerve cells from dying and therefore we have cognitive and or motor function. And I just want to show you the axonal transport, the information highway, because I think it is very telling for everything our drug does. So you see three pictures. The top picture shows the arm of a normal nerve cell. If you disregard the vertical lines, the artifacts, you see that the little black dots that carry the information go smoothly from the left to the right. In the middle, you see abnormal nerve cell. It's a Down syndrome cell. In Down syndrome, all the neurotoxic proteins are high and inflammation is high. And the little black dots, they don't flow smoothly. They stop, they move, they stop. Overall, the speed through a sick nerve cell is about half as fast or as slow as through a healthy nerve cell. And then at the bottom, you have the exact same Down syndrome cell as in the middle but it's treated for 48 hours with ANES-401. And as you can see, the little black dots, they flow smoothly. This is a beautiful example of how our drug restores the information highway so that your brain and your fingers can work and function in real time and they're not sluggish. Now, if, if we reverse the whole toxic cascade, then we should see efficacy. And in fact, in seven different animal models, we have been able to show efficacy. The first four animal models are Alzheimer mice, Down syndrome mice, stroke mice, and traumatic brain injury rats. In all these animals, our drug fully restores memory and learning. They behave identical to healthy, normal animals. In the middle, we have two movement disorders, Parkinson's and frontotemporal dementia. And in both animal models, again, after treating with ANDS-401, the animals behave and move exactly like healthy, normal animals. And finally, we figured, well, if it works in the brain and it works in the body, how about the eye? And so what we did, we induced glaucoma in rats. The way you do that is you increase the pressure in the eye of a rat. As the pressure increases, the retina dies and the eye goes blind. When we treat a rat with our drug, increase the pressure, um, the retina does not die and the eye does not go blind. So we have shown in totally different models that our drug works. And now let's get to humans because that's really what in the end we want to know. So I'm talking about two phase two studies, one in Alzheimer's and one in Parkinson's. They're both in all early to moderate patients. They're both phase two. We are using or we are treating 14 Alzheimer patients and 14 plus 40 Parkinson's patients. The reason we decided in 14 and 14 is that we wanted to have some interim data just in case I'm crazy and the stuff doesn't work. Anyhow, we did the study in 12 sites. It is a double-blind, placebo-controlled biomarker study. And the end point is reversal of the whole toxic cascade. And then at the end, we want to see function. And that's shown here. So first, we want to show that the neurotoxic proteins that are toxic are lowered. Their levels are low. Then we want to show that axonal transport is improved. It's faster. Then we want to show that inflammation is down. And finally, we want to show that nerve cells do not die. If we lower the whole toxic cascade, animal models have shown us that we should see an increase in cognition in Alzheimer's and function in Parkinson's. And so let's see what we see. These are the timelines. We have, we have finished treating the oh, Parkinson's patients, we have finished treating the Alzheimer patients. The rest of the study will be done in June, and we are presently looking at finalizing most of the data. So here we go. This is the toxic cascade and what we expect to see in Alzheimer's and in Parkinson's patients. 
So as I was saying, we want to lower the neurotoxic proteins, increase axonal transport, lower inflammation, not have any dead nerve cells. And then, of course, we need control proteins. What if everything goes up or down? We want something that doesn't change. And finally, we want to see motor function improvement and cognitive function improvement. To date, you see one lonely plus over there. We have shown that in Parkinson's patients, we are improving speed, we are improving coordination and motor function, and that is shown right here. So you see four diagrams. The first one shows speed, and speed is measured in relation to baseline, which means the same patients before treatment and after treatment. And as you can see, they do a lot better. It's statistically significantly better. Then the next one shows not the same patients, but placebo patients and treated patients at 25 days. And again, you see that placebo is doing worse and, and treated patients are doing better. And on the other side, you see coordination and the treated patients compared to themselves remain stable, whereas placebo gets a lot worse and the data again is statistically significant. In the next few weeks and few months, we will then slowly give you the toxic cascade. We will give you the Alzheimer data. And I will show that this drug, in fact, can improve not just uh, speed and coordination in Parkinson's patients, but also cognition in Alzheimer's patients. And I think that's kind of it for the scientific part. Now, to being thinly traded and not having a lot of shares, that's 100% correct. We have only 7 million outstanding shares and only 4.4 float. Today, I think the price is $26 per share, and we have about 5 million in the bank. And I think that's the whole talk. So if you have questions, please ask. Let me jump in, jump in here and see if we have any questions from the chat. And uh, there's uh, Jeff McGordy, your, uh, your, your CFO, who will be on here as well. Um, I don't think we have any chat questions. So in that case, I will jump in with a question of my own, um, which is, what, what, just to sum it up for us, what is the biggest catalyst in the next 12 months? Well, actually, everything. Um, well, that's, that's, that's not that's not fair. That's not that's not I, I, no, fair. No, no, no. For me, it's everything because we've proved uh, that it works in Parkinson's. Let me go back a little. You know, this is the table that shows everything. It shows how a nerve cell dies in Alzheimer's, how it dies in Parkinson's, and how we recover it in Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. If we can show that, we already have shown that it works in Parkinson's to a big extent. There is really no reason to believe that we have an increase in speed if we are not improving axonal transport. But in terms of moving forward, we'll finish the study, we'll package up everything, we'll go to the FDA and ask for an end of phase two meeting. And then we will propose two phase three studies, one in Down syndrome with Alzheimer's, that's an orphan indication. Down syndrome patients, come down much earlier with Alzheimer's, and their course is much more homogeneous than in the general population. And the second phase three will be in Parkinson's. By the end of the year, I want to start at least one of the two phase three studies. Jeff, is there anything you want to add just from a financial standpoint that wasn't already addressed? Uh, no, I think Maria uh, covered that pretty well. We are, uh, you know, we're well funded to complete our phase two trials and get into 2022, but we've got bigger plans than that, which as Maria mentioned, would be going into phase three trials. And um, we do have 40% you know, insider ownership. So there's strong support of the company from with uh, within the board and uh, the managing team. Um, so we're looking forward to, uh, to great things. And as Maria said, there's a lot of positive news we're expecting given the, uh, the amount of things we're measuring in our phase two trial in Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. And can you, a couple questions from the chat. Maybe you can just clarify, Maria, on a timeline, on when we, when we can expect uh, any, some uh, data, uh, upcoming data. Okay, if you look at this table, you see how many fields need to be filled in. The most important ones are efficacy and motor function and efficacy and cognition. 
because if we have no efficacy, I mean, yeah, that's great. Okay, fine. The control proteins are good. Um, so I would think that efficacy in Alzheimer is eminent. The the uh, let's say two or so, two or three weeks, whereas the other factors, I would do one to two months. All right, two to three weeks for efficacy data, one to two months for everything else. Is yes. that that's what you're saying? Okay. Yes, exactly. All right. Uh, RTJ family in the chat. I see all your questions, man. Um, I, I, I'm looking. So uh, it looks like RTJ is saying, I guess you had previously guided that there would be some data this week, but now you're saying it will be a couple more weeks down down the road, two to three weeks. Yes, we have, everything has always taken a little longer. Um, I'm learning that people are very good at telling you yes, and then it just takes longer. Yeah, that's that's uh, generally true. Generally true. All right, uh, Maria uh, Matricini and uh, Jeff McGordy, the CEO and CFO, respectively, of Anovius Bio. Um, I think that's it. Unless let me take one last look at the chat, make sure I covered everything. I don't want to miss a question and see it after the fact. Uh, what about serum data? Is a question that just came in. Excellent question. I'm just showing CSF here, okay, because I'm having enough problems showing you CSF. We are actually measuring the same, the same markers in, in, uh, in plasma. Okay. Yes. So that will come later. I can't push them to do everything at the same time. L no, later, later meaning like Q, Q3, Q4? No, they're the exact same factors, inflammatory okay. factors, neurodegenerative factors, axonal factors neurodegenerative factors, the same factors we're doing in CSF, they're also doing in plasma. Okay. So when you say later, I'm just trying to get... Uh, oh, you were uh, about the Q, the ES, uh, put it Q3. Q3. Q3, Q3. we'll have go. everything now. Q3. Before we go to the FDA, we'll have everything. All right, Maria and Jeff, thank you both so much.